Hello YouTube. My name is Al. <laughs> nah, I'm I'm too giggly to do proper Al thing. Hello everyone, my name is Rocksops and welcome back to another YouTube video. So yes, I'm in Al cosplay today because we are talking about Death Note. Specifically the live action versus the anime because I watched the live action many years before I watched the anime. I only saw the anime last year. And when I say I watch the live actions, I'm talking about these, which came out in the mid-2000s. So, before I go on, I need to change this camera angle because this is very uncomfortable on my neck. Okay, this is much better. And yes, I have a lollipop out because if I'm cosplaying Owl, I might as well have some sweets. So, there are three major-ish differences. There's a few minor differences here and there, but there are three major differences between the Death Note story that I knew and what goes on in the anime. And I want to talk about those because um, two out of three of them, I actually prefer more in the live action than the anime. And before you come at me, hear me out first because trust me, they're pretty good. So the first major difference is with Rey's fiance Naomi, which comes at the end of the first movie. So this is one of the differences that I much prefer in the live action than the anime. So in the anime, Light runs into her at the police office, they go for a little walk and he manages to get information, writes her name in the book and sends her off to unalive herself. In the live action, after Colleen Ray, he has been stalked by Naomi and this is when he sets up a date and he gets to a museum with his date whose name for the life of me I cannot remember, but while there, he scripts this whole thing for Naomi to die, where she pulls a gun on them and accidentally shoots Light's date. And then because of the trauma, she then shoots herself in the head. That is so unbelievably twisted. And that is why I like it more in the live action than the anime. One more detail I want to throw in here is that I felt that in the live action, Light was way more arrogant than anything else, while in the anime, he was just incredibly smart and cunning, which I liked a lot more, but that one moment in the live action where he scripted the whole thing to make himself seem like the victim, that was one thing I did actually like about the live action light, because he was messed up, and apparently I have a thing for messed up characters. Not that I ever actually simped for light. I was an awesome am an awesome. Why am I using past tense? So the second movie picks up at Light's girlfriend's funeral and he uses the tragedy of her death as his reason to ask his father to get him into the task force, which of course he wants to do so that he can meet and kill Al, but that's besides the point. So this is where the second main difference between the live action and anime comes in. Because when Light gives up the death note, Ryu gives it to Kiyomi, who has no idea who Light actually is, because she is just an employee at Sakura TV. So Kiyomi is essentially Kira 3 because there is no Higuchi in the live action, and a lot of what goes down with him, they have smushed into Kiyomi. Now, it has been about 12 years since I have watched these movies, so my memory is a little fuzzy here, but I'm gonna do the best I can to explain what happens here. So Kiyomi uses the Death Note to further her own career at Sakura TV. Somehow, or the other arrogant live-action light figures out who she is, they bug her house to get proof, although they just hear her talking to Rem and have no idea what she's talking to. But anyways, they do set up a fake interview at Sakura TV with Matsuda, I can't remember why, but uh, she does go into panic mode and goes racing there. And it is at the studio that they apprehend her and everyone touches the death note and starts seeing Rem and freaking out. Also, somehow or the other, Light got away with being in a room with everyone and managed to get the paper out of his hand to write her name on it in his blood. Then again, I guess Al was next to him in the anime as well, but... Baby was seeing a Shinigami for the first time. His whole perception of reality was being shaken up. I don't think he's gonna pay much attention to the guy next to him. Totally not just me defending Al because I'm obsessed with him. And now we have the final difference between live action and anime. And this one, I like way, way more in the live action than the anime. And again, don't come at me until you've heard everything that I've said first. So for reasons I cannot remember, the entire task force 
is taking the Death Note away to be locked up somewhere. And I mean everyone is gone. It is just Al and Light in the building. Watari is not there because he has gone to pick up Misa to come visit Light for some reason. He's going to get Misa because Al figured out that Misa is the second Kira and she started killing again so he's bringing her in to apprehend her. So Al and Light are in the observation room watching all of the monitors and they see Watari come in with Misa. And that is when Al says that if anything happens to him he's hooked onto a life support, not life support, a heart rate monitor thingy. So if anything happens to him, everyone on the task force will know. It's something like that. It's been 12 years, my memory's fuzzy. Now obviously Rem is right there and is very attached to Misa. And this is when she writes Watari's name in the death note and Al's. So they see Watari fall dead as the elevator opens and Al topples off of his chair and the heart rate monitor starts flatlining. Anyways, Light and Misa find each other in the building. He asks for Ryuk's death note and writes his own father's name in there and explains that he has to kill his father because it's the only way. So Light writes in the death note that his father comes back, gives him the death note that belongs to Rem and then dies of a heart attack. So his father does come back and I cannot remember anything that Light says to him but he asks for the death note back. His father gives him the bag and it's empty. No death note in there. So a very confused Light is suddenly surrounded by the entire task force who has guns pointed at him. And then Al comes down the stairs with an explanation. Yes, the same Al whose heart rate monitor went flatlining just a few minutes ago. So similar to what Nia did in the anime, Al was the one who played the game of switching death notes around. So that Misa's death note was not actually the real one. And this guy who I actually like but I cannot remember his name never existed and Misa kind of took his place in the last bit of the second movie. But that still brings up a question of how the heck did Al survive Rem writing his name in her death note which I'm pretty sure she would know was hers. The reason Al survived is because he wrote- I'm so mad right now I did that all cool and dramatic like and then my camera was yelling at me because my card was full because I forgot to delete the clips from the last video I did. Anyways the reason Al survived is because he wrote his own name in Ryuk's dead note to die 23 days later. So this is why I like this change in the live action. It is because Al is the one who outsmarted Light. And that's just very satisfying to me. Totally not just because I'm a giant Al simp slash Kinney slash I'm just obsessed with the dude. Now the very ending of this movie is something that I do actually remember very clearly because like I mentioned before, live action Light's main characteristic is that he's arrogant. And this was his key moment of pure arrogance. Because while he is completely freaking out having been outsmarted, he turns to Ryuk and tells Ryuk to write everyone else's name in the death note. So Ryuk is just laughing his little butt off, gets out his death note and starts writing. And what does he write? Yagami Light. And yes, I did a dramatic pause there just so I could bring up my own death note. So in the live action, Light does not die alone on a staircase somewhere. He dies in front of the whole task squad, in front of Misa, and in his father's arms. So there's actually a third live action movie that follows what Al does in his 23 days before he dies and in that movie you get to meet Nia. For the life of me I cannot remember if Mello was ever a character at any point in the live action but I do know that they kind of mushed him into Al because Al is often seen holding a bar of chocolate and just nomming on it the way Mello does. I don't know why I'm doing this with the death note. I shouldn't be doing this with the death note. There's actually one more minor difference I want to talk about because again, it's something I like more in the live action than the anime. In the anime during the end credits, it is very, very much implied that Misa could not go on without light. However, in the live action, there's a bit of a time skip at the end where it shows that Misa is still very much alive. 
and still very much obsessed with light. Although she cannot remember why, because I guess she gave up the Death Note again. So yeah, those are the main differences between the live-action Death Note and the anime. And honestly, I do like the anime more because the live-actions do seem very rushed compared to the anime. There is so much more depth to the characters and there are more characters in the anime, so... Yeah, I like that one more. But that being said, I would still recommend the live actions to anyone. And also, if anyone knows where I can find these movies, please let me know because I would love to watch them again. So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like this video, leave me a comment, tell me down in the comments who your favorite Death Note character is. Obviously, mine is Owl for many reasons, and maybe I will do a video talking about that in the future. Maybe. Also, if you are new to my channel and enjoy anime-themed videos and cosplay stuff, which I mostly do in shorts, be sure to hit subscribe and book the bell. I don't have a posting schedule yet, but I am trying to be a little more consistent. Also, I do have a gaming channel where I am currently playing Bleach Brave Souls. I'm doing main story stuff every Shinigami Sunday and side quest stuff, stuff every Taicho Tuesday. So. If you're into that kind of thing, go check it out. But fair warning, I am not a professional gamer. It is just me messing around and having fun because I'm a Bleach fan. So yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, you just keep rocking. Bye!